welcome back to another crochet tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I am extremely excited to be sharing with you the Holly and Berries stocking. Now this crochet along is running over the course of the next eight days so by the end of next Monday you'll have access to all of the video patterns you need to create your very own Holly and Berries crocheted stocking. Now the video that you're watching today is for the slightly more advanced pattern that uses these post stitches to create this beautiful diamond shape. If you feel that you're not quite there with your crochet skills, of course I'm going to encourage you to give it a go, but don't worry, there is an alternative available for you right now, which is linked in the top right hand corner, where you can create a slightly easier version that has a plain section underneath this beautiful fringing, so that you don't have to miss out on making this pattern. You can of course stitch up both patterns if you want to, but it's entirely up to you which one you make first. Now the leg portion of this pattern has been divided into two separate videos because there is a lot of information included, lots of stitches and techniques used in just this half of the leg. So the second part of the leg pattern is actually going to be released tomorrow morning for you and that will take you through the second half. Of course with any YouTube tutorial you can of course slow down the video when you need to to really hone in on those details about where we're placing our stitches. I do try to be as slow as possible, sometimes I get a bit carried away. So if you need to you can change the settings to slow the video down. If you'd like to follow along to the written pattern you can do that too, that's linked in the description box for you and again just that first section has been released over on the website for you today and that's for both the um, slightly more advanced version and the fringed version too. Once you've completed your first section don't forget to come on over to the Facebook group which is linked also in the description box below so that we can share in your success in completing this first part of the Hollies and Berries stocking. Let's find out those materials we need so we can get stitching. So the materials that you're going to need for your holly and berries stocking is any chunky weight yarn. Now you can of course work this beautiful um, stocking in one colour and it does look really striking because it's so highly textured. But I would encourage you to use two shades because it really does look great when you use a contrasting colour on the heel and toe. I'm going to be using my favourite which is of course the paint box yarns Simply Chunky. Now this is a size 5 yarn, so it's a chunky or a bulky weight yarn. It comes in a 100 gram hank or ball with 136 metres on it and it is 100% acrylic. Now the pattern for working up in chunky does require just, over, just around 150 metres. So you're going to need a ball and a bit anyway. So you might as well get two contrasting colours and it will work up lovely. Now the shades that I'm using here is shade number th uh, 300, which is paper white and then I have this beautiful red which is shade number 314. I have another example of a red colour that's available from Paintbox which is more whiny, wine, <laughs> wine coloured in shade which is shade number 315 and you can see the difference is really quite small. This to me is that more classic combination of red and white, the Santa colours, whereas this is going for a more, I would say this is more like a boho look, you know that little bit deeper of the red. So whichever colour you're going to go for, we're going to gather those materials. Now you may want to, oh no, you're going to need your darning needle on hand because you're going to be seaming your leg today at the end of this. So of course you're going to need a pair of scissors. We are only going to be using one colour today, so you don't need your contrast colour because the leg is worked all in one colour. Now as I've mentioned before, we are working the more advanced version of the leg pattern, so you'll find those beautiful diamonds in this version. But the link in the description box will take you straight over to the slightly less advanced version where it features the opportunity to place some fringing. And that's when it really, this stocking really does look amazing when it's worked up in one colour. So for now, let's gather the main colour, your six millimetre crochet hook, and let's get started on this leg. So the leg section of our holly and berry stocking is worked in rows. So we're going to start by making a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And then we're going to start by making a chain. Now the chain length we need to make is 40 chains. So to chain we just yarn over the hook and then bring that hook through the loop on our hook. <laughs> Lots of hooks there. Um, to create our chain and we're going to do that for a total of 40 times. So that was number one, two, three, four. I'll leave you to carry on and create your chain of 40. If you remember, if you need to count your chains, just count up one side of them and I'll meet you when you have a total chain of 40. 
do remember that this chain on our do remember that this loop on our hook does not count as a chain. Once we've completed our chain of 40, we're going to continue with row one, starting in that second chain from hook. And we're going to work one US single crochet into each chain from hook, which is uh, the equivalent to a UK double crochet. So remembering that this loop on our hook does not count as a stitch, neither to, we're not going to work into this first chain, we're going to work into this second one. Now, because this is going to be the very top of our stocking, I'm going to make a recommendation that instead of just working underneath that first loop of our chain, we're going to flip our chains over and work into the plait or the back loop. So if you see from the side, you've got these kind of raised bumps and we're going to insert our hook underneath those raised bumps, just like so, so that we have one loop still and work a single crochet by yarning over bringing your hook through and yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook. Once you've worked that first one, those back bumps become a little bit more apparent and you can really kind of see them a little bit clearly. So again, just put your hook through that back loop, yarn over, bring your loop up, yarn over the hook and pull through both loops on your hook. So we're gonna continue to work one single crochet into each chain across and at the end we're going to have a stitch count of 39 single crochets. So continue all the way down. If you want to work into your just the top loop you can do but the joy of working into your back loop is it leaves the remainder of the stitch giving us a really nice edge. So keep working down and I'll meet you at the end of row one where your stitch count will be 39 single crochets. So at the end of row one, you should have a stitch count of 39 single crochets. Mine was a little bit twiddly, and that's more to do with the fact that once we've worked our second row into there, it will become less twisted. So for row two and for row three, we're gonna do the same. So we start by making our chain of one. I always chain before I turn, it's up to you if you've already chained one. And for rows two and three, we're going to make one US half double crochet, one UK half treble crochet into each stitch across. So we yarn over, we're going straight into that first stitch, we insert our hook, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Don't work back into where that hole is, we need to go into the next stitch under both loops but we yarn over the hook first, insert our hook, yarn over, bring that through to bring our third loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we repeat that all the way down. So we yarn over the hook, insert our hook underneath both loops of our stitch, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So repeat that all the way across to the end of row two, and then we're repeating this row again. So we begin with that chain one at the end of our row, turn our work like a page in a book, and then we are ready to continue. So I'm gonna meet you at the end of row three. We're currently working row two, and we're gonna repeat row two for row three, and then we're gonna meet back ready to complete row four together. At the end of row three, you should still have a stitch count of 39, just this time they're US half double crochets or UK half treble crochets. So going into row four, we're going to start these beautiful textured bobbles that feature in this pattern. And we're going to be using the berry stitch. So row four, we start with our chain one and turn. We're then going to work one single crochet into the first stitch underneath the chain. We're then going to work our berry stitch into the next stitch. So for this, we start by yarning over the hook and inserting our hook into the next stitch. We yarn over, bring a loop up, and we're going to yarn over again, but this time we're only going to pull through that first loop on our hook and leave these three loops on our hook. We're going to repeat that again. So we yarn over the hook, insert the hook, yarn over to bring a fifth loop up, we're going to yarn over and pull through that first loop. We still have five loops on our hook, so we yarn over and pull through all five loops on our hook. To complete the stitch, 
we do a chain one by yarning over and pulling through the loop on our hook. Now the berries will show on the right side of your fabric. So when we're working them, we need to be looking at the wrong side so that the berries show on the right side of our project. We're then gonna work a slip stitch into the next stitch. So we just yarn over and bring that loop up and straight through the loop on your hook. We're gonna repeat this all the way across, working one berry stitch followed by a slip stitch. So let's work a couple more of these together. So we yarn over the hook, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring our loop up. We're gonna yarn over and just pull through that first loop on our hook. We repeat that by yarning over, inserting the hook into the same stitch again, yarn over, bring up a fifth loop. I'm moving these out of the way so that we yarn over and just pull through that first loop on our hook. Then we yarn over, I'm gonna pull down so that we can pull through all five loops on our hook, followed by a chain one to complete. We then slip stitch into the next stitch. Let's do that again. So we yarn over the hook and insert, bring up a loop, yarn over, pull through that first loop, yarn over the hook, reinsert the hook into the same stitch, bring up that fifth loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through all five loops, finishing with a chain one. We then slip stitch into the next stitch and we repeat that once again. In fact, we're gonna repeat this all the way down here and we should end with a slip stitch in our final stitch. So continue to repeat your berry stitch by yarning over, inserting the hook, yarn over, bring up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and reinsert, bring up your loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through all five and close it with that chain one. You then slip stitch to bring that stitch nice and berry-ish. Now that chain one that we're doing to close this stitch does not count as a stitch. When we're working back for row five, we're not gonna work into those chain ones, but just be, I'll be more, um, I'll be really clear with that when we're working that row. So keep working all the way down, working your berry stitch, closed by a chain one, followed by a slip stitch into the next. And I'll meet you at the end of row four, where you should finish with your slip stitch. I'll see you in a few moments. So I'm just working my final slip stitch, making sure I go through both loops. And that finishes row four, and we have that beautiful texture. And we're gonna go straight into row five. Now, don't forget to make sure that you've got the right number of berries. And if you've got any that look a bit awry, it's possible that you've missed the slip stitch in between. So you should have a stitch count of 19 berry stitches. And in between, you should have 19 slip stitches too. You've also got that first single crochet that we made right at the beginning for a total stitch count of 39. So going into row five, we're gonna start by working a chain one and turning our work. Now it's quite important that we really identify our stitches here because we've just done that slip stitch here and there's our chain one and there is our slip stitch and then we have our berry stitch. Now just next to, it's really hard to see, let me grab a needle. So I've grabbed a couple of needles to help us identify the stitches for row five because it's important that we're working into the right ones. So here is our chain one that we've just made here right underneath our hook and next to it, just there is, is our slip stitch. Now this small stitch next to it again is our chain one. Now this chain one does not count, so we're not gonna work into that. Instead, if you tilt your, your work towards you, you will see the top of our berry stitch here. A nice big stitch to work into. For the first stitch in row five, we're going to work into that slip stitch from the previous row. So it's just to the side of your berry stitch, just there. Show you again. So this is our chain one, and we're inserting our hook under here, kind of next to the berry. That's where we're gonna insert our hook. And this is where we're going to work our single crochet. It's, it might be quite tight because slip stitches tend to be. So work our single crochet 
if you tilt our work towards us, you can see you've got Jesus, that chain one next to where we've just worked that first single crochet. We're skipping this. We're not working into it. In fact, we're going to go into that nice big stitch, which is the top of our berry stitch. And there we're going to work a slip stitch. So we insert the hook into the top of that berry stitch. So from the side, you can't really see it as well as if you tilt the work towards you. And there's two loops there at the top of your berry stitch. And we just pull through and straight through the loop on our hook. Then we have that slip stitch in between. So we're going to work a single crochet into there. We skip that chain one and we can working into that big stitch for the berry stitch with a slip stitch. Here's the slip stitch in between those two berries. So we push through and work a single crochet. And then we skip the chain one and work into the stitch on the top of the berry stitch, working, oh, working a slip stitch. And we're gonna repeat this all the way down. So we work a single crochet into the slip stitch from the previous row in between those two berry stitches. Skip the chain one, and then in the top of that berry stitch, we're working a slip stitch. So continue to repeat that all the way down, for row five, and I'll meet you at the end, ready for row six. So at the end of row five, you've got one stitch remaining, and we just need to work a final single crochet into that last stitch. And then we've edged all of those beautiful berries. Going into row six, we start with a chain of one and we've got the wrong side of our project facing us. So we're gonna do another row of these berry stitches. We want them to be alternated. So they're gonna sit in between the berry stitches on the previous row. So to do that, to so make one single crochet into that first stitch, followed by a slip stitch into the next. So just by inserting, pull through and through the loop on our hook. This means that we're going to be working our berry stitches into the top of those single crochets from the previous row. So if you're looking for that little detail, you can see you've got the loop underneath of your single crochets. Then next to it is your slip stitches. Let's do a couple of these berry stitches together again. So we start by yarning over our hook, inserting into that next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over. And we're just going to pull through that first loop on our hook. We repeat that by yarning over the hook, reinserting into the same stitch, yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, and pull through the next loop. We then yarn over and pull through all five loops on our hook, finishing with a chain one. We then work a slip stitch into the next stitch. We're just gonna repeat that all the way across. We'll do another one together. So we yarn over the hook, insert our hook into the next stitch, Yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and just pull through that first loop on your hook. Yarn over, reinsert into the same stitch again, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over and just pull through that first loop once again before yarning over and pulling through all five loops, closing that berry stitch with a chain one. We're then going to slip stitch into that next stitch. So we're going to repeat this all the way across and we'll end in the last three stitches. We're going to work our berry stitch, a slip stitch, and then finally a single crochet. So keep working all the way along, working your berry stitch, remembering to close them with your chain one and then slip stitch into that next stitch across. Oops. And I will meet you at the end of row six, ready to go on to row seven. So I'm just working those last three stitches of row six. So working my berry stitch, a chain one, slip stitching into the second from last, and then finally in our last stitch across, working a single crochet. Have a look at the other side. We've now got, we've got these alternating berries. So they're sitting kind of opposite each other. And we now need to work back across the top of these berries to bring the row height up to the same as before. So at the end of row six, you should now have 18 of the berry stitches with 19 single crochets. You've got an extra one at the beginning and a single crochet at the start and at the finish. 
So we're going to go into row seven, which is very similar to the row five that we did. And this will bring our stitch height up to where we need it to be for the rest of the leg. So we start with our chain of one. Now this time's a little bit different because we have our slip stitch is one stitch in this time. So we're going to start by working a single crochet into the first stitch on top of the single crochet from the previous row. And remember we had that slip stitch, then we have the chain one that we skip, and then we slip stitch into the top of the berry stitch. So we have already worked one single crochet into the top of the first stitch, and then we work a single crochet into our slip stitch. We skip that chain one, and then we're looking for the top of that berry stitch where we work a slip stitch. We have the slip stitch from the previous row in the middle of these two berries, and this is where we place our single crochet. We skip the chain one, pick up those back two loops at the top of that berry stitch and slip stitch into there. And we're gonna repeat this all the way down to the final two stitches. So we're working our slip stitches on top of our berries, followed by a single crochet into those slip stitches in between the berry stitches. We're gonna make sure we skip those chain ones, so don't work into those as well, they don't count as a stitch. So continue all the way down, and I'll meet you down um, for our last single crochet in our very last stitch. So I'll see you in a moment. I just worked my last slip stitch into that final berry stitch. I've got two stitches remaining, both of which we're going to work one single crochet into. So at the end of row seven, you should have a stitch count of 21 single crochets and 18 slip stitches. Now rows eight and nine, you're going to like. They are nice and easy, no berries, no slip stitches. We start with a chain of one, and then we're going to work one US half double crochet into each stitch across. So remembering that was to yarn over, insert the hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. And we're simply going to work one half double crochet, sorry, that's one US half double crochet, one UK half treble crochet, into each stitch across. So each slip stitch and each single crochet of the previous row. We're going to do this for two rows. So this is row eight and row nine is also going to be the same again. So that chain one and then half double crochet into each stitch across. So work those two rows of half double crochets and I'll meet you back in a moment for rows 10 and 11. At the end of row nine, you should still have a stitch count of 39, just this time it's going to be half double crochets. At the minute that is pretty beautiful just on its own, but we are going to carry on and add a little bit more to this leg. As you can see, it's pretty short at the moment. So for rows 10 and 11, it's nice and simple. We start with a chain of one, and then this time we're going to work one single crochet, so a US single crochet, a UK double crochet, into each stitch across. So we simply insert, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two. And we work one single crochet into each stitch across. And um, at the end, oh, this is for both rows 10 and 11. So we're doing two rows of single crochet. And then it's all change when it comes to row 12. So keep working across for rows 10, 11, and I'll meet you back for the start of the slightly more advanced section of this stocking leg. I will see you in a few moments. At the end of row 11, you should have a stitch count of 39 single crochets and we're starting to increase the length of our stocking. So for row 12, we're going on to start the slightly more advanced section of our stocking. So in the slightly more advanced section, we're going to be working this diamond pattern all the way and here is where it starts. So we're gonna work our first row and then the diamonds are worked in the next row and they're actually detached from the pattern, they're actually worked around the front post. So if you would prefer just to put a tassel along here, um, I will put the link again here to go and watch the uh, or the alternative video of this section of the leg. There's just four rows of this section. So if you've never tried it, give it a go. And if it is still too difficult, by all means, you have my full permission to go and try the alternative version. But it just creates such a beautiful diamond that I think it's worth giving it a go. 
So we begin this um, diamond section by working um, row 12. So we start by making a chain of three. So we yarn over, pull through three times. Now this chain three does count as a stitch. So this chain three is gonna count as the first double crochet of this row. And we're then gonna work one double crochet into each stitch across. Because this chain three counts, we're not gonna work into the stitch that it's attached to or, under, or the stitch that's underneath the chain three. Instead, we're gonna be working into this stitch here. So we yarn over the hook and insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, so we've got three loops on our hook. We yarn over and pull through the first two loops, yarn over and pull through the next two. And we repeat this stitch all the way across. So we start by yarning over, insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, bring a loop up, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. So we continue that all the way across and at the end of row 12, you will have a stitch count of 39 double crochets, remembering that your chain three counts as a double crochet. So continue to work across and I'll meet you in the moment for the start of our diamonds. So at the end of row 12, from the right side, we now have um, all these wonderful double crochets. We have all these wonderful double crochets and we should still have a stitch count of 39. So row 13 is where we're going to set up our diamonds here in the next row. So we're going to start by working three single crochets and then the diamond itself is worked using the front post treble crochet two together stitch. And that's in the UK terms is known as a front post double treble two together. It's a lot more complicated and using a lot more words than it needs to. But essentially the most important thing is to establish where you're going to be inserting your hook. So the notes tell us that we need to work a front post double crochet two together over the next stitch by inserting the hook around the second single crochet two rows below. So that's the first part we're going to work. So here's one, two. So we're going to insert our hook around that second single crochet. So there's the first one underneath that needle and that's the second one we're going to work around. So let's work those first three single crochets. So we've done our chain one. We insert our hook to work our first single crochet. That's one, two, and three. We're then you're gonna get set up to work that first part of the front post double crochet two together. So we yarn over the hook twice, find where we're inserting our hook two rows down, And we're going in around the front of the post. So it goes in the front and out the front. I'm folding everything down so I can focus on these loops. So we've currently got three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and bring our hook back through. And now we have four, four loops. So we start by yarning over and we're only gonna pull through the first two. And then we repeat that, yarning over and pulling through the next two. We're gonna leave these two loops on our hook and that's what's gonna create the decrease stitch. So the next point that we're going to work is because it's a double crochet, front post double crochet two together, we're going to leave these two here so we can continue with our decrease. So the second point that we need to insert our hook is in the fifth. So we're going to leave three single crochets between this front post before we insert our hook. So one, two, three, and this is the point where we're gonna work around. So we just need to make sure we've got those three stitches unworked in between. So I'm gonna leave that there for a moment and we'll get ourselves set up to work the second part of this stitch. So we wrap the yarn over the hook twice, remove that needle. So make sure we've skipped three in between. So that's one, two, and three. And this is the post we wanna work around. So I'm inserting my hook underneath and around that post, yarn over, bring that loop through. So we currently have five loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through the next two, and that leaves us with three loops on our hook to work that decrease portion. So we yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And as you can see, we've created our first diamond.
well, the first half of a diamond either, anyway. Now, we don't really want these stitches to be too loose, and the only way to do that is to work a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm going to do that again with you, just so you're happy with where you're working, and hopefully that I can leave that loop a little bit tighter. So we know that we're working around that second and that fifth front post of our single crochets, two rows below. We start by yarning over the hook twice, and we're working around that second single crochets post, yarn over, bring our loop up. We should have four loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We then wrap the yarn around the hook twice. We're skipping three single crochets. So one, two, three, and working around the next. Yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the last three. Yeah, still as big. A little bit neater on my trebles there. So once we've worked the first part of our diamond, we're going to skip that stitch behind. So automatically we've worked over that stitch, which means we don't work into it. And instead, we're going to work one single crochet. So we leave that one here just behind where that stitch sits. So we're working one, two, three single crochets. So one, two, and three. Now this one, this is where it gets a little bit easier for us because we know which post we need to work around next. So we're going to start the next crochet two together in over the next stitch. So we don't work into the stitch. We just double wrap in that yarn around the hook and we're going to work around this last post that we worked around. So we just reinsert the hook around it. So once you've wrapped the yarn around the hook twice, insert the hook back around that same post. Yarn over, bring your loop up. We've got those four loops again. So we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then we stop there. We yarn over the hook twice again, and we want to leave those three single crochets unworked. And we're going to work around that post instead. So we've yarned over twice, we're skipping one, two, three, inserting our hook, yarn over, bring that loop up, pull through two, pull through two, and then pull through the last three loops on your hook. And there we have another start of a diamond. And once again, we don't work the stitch that the diamond part sits over, which is here. Instead, we work into that next stitch and the next two stitches, so one, two, and three single crochets. And we're just gonna repeat this all the way along. So we're gonna work over the next stitch here. So wrap the yarn around the hook twice and work around that post. We skip one, two, three, wrap the yarn around the hook twice and work around that next post. So let's do that together. So wrap the yarn around the hook twice Insert around the single crochet post that you've just worked around. Bring your loop up, pull through two, pull through two, and leave those two on the hook. Wrap the yarn around the hook twice. So we're skipping one, two, three, and we're going to work around that post instead. Insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through the last three. We've worked over that stitch there behind. I'm just pulling it down so you can see. So we're going to work into that next stitch with one single crochet. That's one, two, and three. So continue to repeat that across. You can, of course, rewatch this row if you need to. I'm going to meet you for the last three stitches because we're going to place... So we're just going to repeat that all the way across and the last three stitches, you'll just be working one single crochet into each. So I'll meet you for the last three stitches. Once you've completed row 13, it should look a little something like this. So you have your kind of zigzag here, um, which is made up by your front post treble. So you should have nine front post two togethers. 
along with 30 single crochets all together at the end of row 13. Row 14, you'll be happy to know, is a nice easy row where we're just going to set up ready for the next row of diamonds. So row 14 is just a repeat of row 12 where we start with our chain of three. Before we work one double crochet, one US double crochet into each stitch across, which is the same as a UK treble crochet. So we're yarning over and inserting our hook and working that double crochet into each stitch across. So continue to work across for row 14 and I'll meet you at the end ready for row 15 where we're going to work the next row of diamonds. So at the end of row 14, you should now have you should now have 39 double crochets, just as we did at the end of row 12. Going into row 15, we're going to start with a chain of one. I've naughtily already done. And now that we have our diamonds established, it's going to be a little bit easier to know exactly where we're placing them on this return row. So we're going to start by first of all making one single crochet into the first stitch or the same stitch as that chain one. And then we need to work one single leg of our diamond just to kind of tie it all in. And we're working over this second stitch. So we yarn over the hook twice and we're going to work around this post of the previous cluster. So we insert the hook. As you can see, you've got like a hole here. So we're all the way around all of that cluster of stitch. We yarn over, bring our loop up, yarn over, pull through two pull through two and pull through two. So that works over that second stitch. We then need to move across so we're kind of in the middle, ready to work our next part of the diamond. So we're gonna work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. And four. And that brings us in the middle of this next the bottom of the post stitch effectively and we can start to work the other legs of our diamonds and continue this lovely shape so we yarn over the hook twice and now we're going to work those front post treble crochets two together again and we're going to be working back around the top of where this cluster joins and where the next cluster joins so once you've yarned over the hook twice we're inserting back around that cluster that's in that row below to work that first leg so pull through two pull through two and then we work the second half we yarn over the hook twice this time we're working around the next cluster so we insert our hook underneath picking up the top of that cluster stitch yarn over bring that loop up pull through two pull through two and then pull through the last three loops and as you can see that adds the other leg of our diamond we then can begin that repeat of where we work those three single crochets before we work the next double front post treble, two together. So that's our three single crochets. And then we're just gonna repeat that again. So we work the front post treble, two together. So we yarn over the hook twice, go back to work around the post of this previous cluster. So we're kind of inserting underneath that cluster Bring your loop up, pull through two, and then pull through two. Yarn over the hook twice. Go back around the next cluster or the top of the next cluster here by working, uh, bringing that loop up, sorry. Pull through two, pull through two. You've got those three loops remaining. Pull through all three loops. And you can see that that's kind of creating the diamond on top of the diamond. So we're going to repeat that all the way along until we reach those last four stitches. And again, just like we've done here, we need to work that extra single front post treble crochet so that we can add in more of these diamonds. So continue to work along working in the next step would be to work your three single crochets. So one, two and three before yarning over the hook twice, inserting your hook around the top of that cluster here for the first leg of this stitch. Bring up your loop, pull through two, pull through two. Wrap the yarn around the hook twice again, and then we're inserting a hook around the top of this cluster 
with a second leg. So bring your loop up, pull through two, pull through two, and then when you've got your three loops left, pull through all three loops and just repeat that across. So we've got to work, we've worked over that stitch, so we need to single crochet into the next three. So that's one, two, and three. And then we're ready to repeat it again. So work your first leg of your treble crochet two together, working around the top of those two clusters. You hear my yarn squeaking, it's because I'm doing this as tight as I possibly can to keep these diamonds nice and straight. And then remember that we've worked over that stitch at the back, that's where that stitch sits. So we skip that and then work one single crochet into the next three. So continue across until you've got your last four stitches remaining and I'll meet you there to work that last front post treble single, like on its own. So we're just kind of working that last leg and I'll meet you in a moment. So I've reached my last four stitches and what we're going to do here is work one single crochet into the next two stitches and two. And then for this last stitch, we're going to work over it like we did at the beginning to add a leg here just to kind of tie in the pattern. So we're going to work a front post treble crochet working across this final cluster here. So we yarn over the hook twice, insert our hook back into that previous cluster from the row before, bring your loop up, pull through two, pull through two, and then finally pull through the last two. And then we're just going to work um, our final single crochet into the top of our chain three. There we go. I'm just pulling my stitches back out because it looks like it's pulled in a bit. These clusters kind of bring everything together, but don't worry, it's more of a tension issue for me most definitely than your stitch counts, I assure you. So now that we've worked up our cuff for our stocking, we have some most beautiful textured stitches here. We have the berry stitch and of course these beautiful diamond clusters. Um, tomorrow there's going to be another video coming out with the next section of the leg for our stocking before the heel comes out in a couple of days. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far and I'm really proud that you've given a go making these diamonds. If you are struggling, don't forget that I am around over in the Facebook group or you can get me on Instagram um, or just comment away on here if you're struggling with any element of this stocking so far. Um, don't forget, if you really are finding it a complete challenge, there is a easier version for you, um, which I'll link again, oh, which is linked below in the description box. But keep working through and trying these treble crochets. Keep your yarn nice and tight and they will look lovely and neat. And I'll be back with you for the other section of the leg in my next video.